how do you know that uh, that one japam, uh, one round of japam that you are planning to do, it is sincerely with all your heart, you know, that you don't know about it. Because that evolvement into that, the mind have to completely be absorbed into your japam itself. So when we are chanting the name continuously, there's a constant practice, you know, for what uh, we bringing the mind into that. Because you see, when we talk about, the, in your question, you are saying about devotion. We can't say, yes, I'm doing this japam now with devotion. I'm doing it because, you see, what is devotion? Devotion is that single point and mindless focus upon the Lord Himself. You know? And you know the state of the mind itself, how the mind keep running around. You know? The mind is not fixed. The mind is not, uh, uh, how to say, it, it, it's restless. And in, in chapter uh, 6, verse 26 of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, you know, Clearly, how is the state of the mind? You know, the mind is restless and unsteady. You know, it's not focus. So it said that let the mind run, but bring it back to where, where it have to be. Bring it back upon the focus on the divine itself. So you see, when we are doing japam, you know, you're rotating, you know, the, you're chanting. Of course, your mind is not fully absorbed into that. You know? Not maybe you, for you it is easy. You know? But uh, even if for you it is easy, you know, then why would the name of God be a challenge to you to chant the 16th round? You know, we say to chant 16 round. You know, even if you can't chant 16 round of Japam, it doesn't matter. Even if you chant one round, it is fine. You know? But that constant, you see, awareness, how the mind is, you know. The mind is jumping from one thought to the other. The, the state of the mind itself is restless. You hear that in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said it, you know. That mind is restless and unsteady. This is the state of the mind, the, the nature of the mind, it is like that. The mind can't really focus itself. You know, as for example, Japam is also a state of meditation, where you are sitting, when you close your eyes, you know, you don't see anything else. You see only the divine itself. So that process of the mind, how it's transforming from wandering mind outside, and bring it into the focus that what is the most important thing for me. You see, for a devotee, it is a constant reminder that our mind have only one focus. The mind should not be focused upon the world outside, but it should be focused upon the Lord Himself. You know? And how we attend to that, firstly, is when we are chanting His name, you know, we are constantly reminding that mind that He is the goal. The world is not the goal for us, but He is that goal for me. You know, it is a constant reminder, you know, that uh, Bhagwan said, you know, to, it is very difficult to control that mind. But with instant practice, when you continuously practice it, you know, in chapter 12, uh, verse 8 of Bhagavad Gita, he said it also in that same context, you see, fix your mind upon me, you know, fix your mind upon me and let your intellect be in me, for you shall without doubt reach me, chapter 12, verse 8, you know. And chapter 12, verse 9, he said that even if it is impossible for you to fix your mind upon me, you know, then do it through the yoga of practice. There he is again referred to the same verse, which uh, what he said earlier to Arjun, you know, in uh, chapter 6, verse 26, he said the same thing, you know, that mind which is restless, that mind which is continuously going away, you know, when you sit in deep meditation, 
How is your mind? Your mind is not focused. The first thing is that your mind is wandering around. It, this is the nature of the mind, you know, that you have to understand that mind, the moment you want to control it, it will fight back with you. Yeah. And when it fight back, of course, you know, you, the samskaras of the past will awake itself. You know, all the things which is what uh, you have done before, you know, the mind will wander back. So this is a state of the mind, you know. So that's why when you are doing japam, you, know, you are focusing that mind upon the divine itself. Clearly saying to the mind that you are not my goal. You are not the one that I have to run behind. For example, if you are sitting in meditation, okay, and uh, when you sit to meditation, first thing that arises inside of your mind is all, maybe from paths, you know, and uh, what you will do afterwards, you know, there's constant flow of the mind. The mind is already wandering left, right, you know. So in that kind of mind, very often, then you will not enjoy your meditation, you will not enjoy your sadhana, you will not enjoy your japam because your mind is constantly in movement. Why? Because you run behind your mind. When your mind is go from here to London, you are running behind your mind to London. If your mind have run here thinking, oh, oh, how wonderful it was, you know, last year, you know, we were in that beautiful holiday place, your mind run there. So you see, there's not an uh, uh, that uh, there's not a fixed point. You know, when that happened to to, let's say, a devotee which is uh, fully absorbed into his sadhana, uh, then that devotee feel regret, feel I say, not regret because it's finished, but they feel bad. You know, but in spite of doing all this, but my mind is still wandering around. But this is how the mind gets attached. You see, one thing we see, let's analyze the mind. When we talk about the mind, what we are talking about, you know, with the mind, what is, what does the mind mean in itself? You know, the mind means a flow of thoughts. That what the mind means. If the mind is running from one thing, you bring it here, but you don't have a clear focus upon what the mind should hold upon, the mind will flow again, another thought will run, the mind will again go. But you should not feel depressed, you know, or despair into that. This is the nature of the mind, like I said. So you, get, you constantly have to remind the mind that you are the consciousness witnessing the whole game. You are not identified yourself with the mind. The moment you identified yourself with the mind or with the body, then it is not possible. So here Bhagavan in chapter 12, you know, verse 8, he said, fix your mind upon me. Here when we analyze that part, when he said, fix your mind upon me, here he said, yes, the mind run towards the senses. So the mind understand everything which is external, material, limited. So here Bhagavan said, have an image inside of your mind. And through that image, you will center your mind, fix it upon the divine form of Krishna himself. He said to Arjun, fix your mind upon me. You know? Don't let your mind be fixed on the world, you know, because the world is finite. But I'm infinite. So you focus, you continuously remind your, your, your mind but where the mind has to be. So Japam is a constant reminder of that. You see, the mind has to be focused upon something which is finite itself. Here, the mind is focusing upon the form of the Lord. You know? It's focusing upon the image of the Lord, which is firstly when you close your eyes, that image must be there. Instantly, without any effort. Of course, at the beginning, the effort must be, you know, because your mind wanders around, you bring, you let it go and bring it back again. 
but focus it upon that image of the Lord himself. Then he said, let your intellect rest in me. Here you see, the mind is focusing upon the outside, but the intellect is something more finer. The intellect is deeper, more than the mind itself. He said, let the intellect rest upon me. Here, let the intellect which rests upon the infinite itself, not the form of the outside, the only, but the essence of Krishna himself, you know, which is everywhere. The omnipresence, omnipotence of God, you know, which is embedded in everything. You know. So that's where he said, let that intellect be in me. For shall, uh, without doubt, you rest. You will rest in me. Yeah. So he said, when that intellect reside into the supremacy of the Lord Himself, yeah, the infinite Lord Himself, that mind itself will transform into divine. So the transformation of that mind itself there will be not a single moment that Krishna is not to be, you will not be reminded of Krishna. Now, so then he said, you know, if that is difficult to do, you know, then practice. You know. so if it is difficult for, if you can't fix your mind upon me, you know, constant practice and seek me. You know, this is important to understand when he say that, you know, the constant practice and seek me. That means an effort must be there. Without an effort, it is not possible to fix the mind on the Lord himself. So he said, if it is difficult, because you see, the mind is continually worry, uh, wandering around, so then let it wander. But with the effort of bringing it back from where it is wandering, bring it back to that precise moment itself when you are sitting there and meditating. So again, it will wander. Bring it back again. So like that, continuously, if you don't run behind the mind, you bring it back again into the present moment where you are sitting in meditation and enjoying your japam and enjoying that precise moment itself. Here we want it by constant practice you know you seek me you will get me that effort is important as you hear again he said japam is important also where constantly you're chanting but through the chanting you're purifying your mind you're bringing you're constantly reminding the mind where it have to focus upon because when, according to your question, if it is just one moment, I do it with pure bhakti, how do you know you have that bhakti? Uh, you can't say, you know. You can't self-judge yourself and say, yes, I am very devoted into the divine itself, you know. So this is from the pure ego and the laziness of not doing that kind of, uh, as a talk will say, then Bhagavan, even chapter 10, he said, for lazy people who can't even do that continuous practice, you know, in chapter 12, verse uh, uh, 11, you know, and he said, you know, if you, even that is not possible, then whatever you do, offer it up to me, you know. It, this is the last stage, you know, for people who can't do their japam, you know, I said, okay, fine. Then at least at night when you sleep, before going to bed, close your eyes and say, Krishna, Rupa Namaste. I offer everything to the lotus feet of Krishna. I offer the day itself to the lotus feet of Krishna. Actually, Japam is that reminder, you know. It's not because, uh, you know, one person just need one time chanting, you know, those who have that devotion, uh, and sincerity, that longing for the Lord Himself, a mere chanting of only he, one time His name, that is enough. But who have that? You know, and such devotee, 
it's very rare to find. You know? I myself, I have not yet found anyone you know, who have had that kind of devotion, where they think only on one time the Lord, and that's it. You know? But yet, as long as the Lord is not visible in, at all time, you know, it is important to continuously remind oneself of his presence, you know, he might remind oneself why we are doing Japam, why our life is here, for what goal, why we are on the spiritual path, you know, for what reason Bhagwan have adopted, uh, as they have not adopted, but they have uh, remind us of his presence, you know, what grace he have given us of that, you know, and chanting of his name, even 16 times is nothing, you know, even million times you will chant a day is nothing. You know, life itself, you know, is not enough to praise His name. You know, that grace that, that His name holds, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, knowing that secret of Nam, you know, one will be free. You know, so it's not just. Uh, 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 we are chanting firstly like we said it is mechanical it is outside we are doing it yes you know so that the outside first that mind which is focused on the outside must be purified and must be transformed must be changed yeah? because without that having its focus without that having that aim you know that Great Hare Krishna is that aim that I have to focus upon. You know, the mind will wander around into the world back, and it is easy. You know, the delusion of the world is easily grabbing that mind itself. You know? So many lives, you see, you have done that. That's why Bhagwan in this life said, "Enough is enough. I remind you of my name, so that you can remember me." Even while leaving this plane, you should remember me. So while, remember, while leaving this plane, if you remember me, you shall attain me. You know, so, but like you said yesterday, you see uh, Bharat Maharaj, how difficult it is to remember God when you have your mind attached to the world. You know? Though when you attach your, your, your mind to the world, it will become very difficult. You know, even remembering the name of God, you let go of your duty. And once you let go of your duty, then you are lost. You are back again into the world outside. Then what have changed? Nothing have changed. So life itself is this reminder through Japam itself. You see, in life you do so many things. You know, when look at your life itself. Your life is a repetition of yesterday and day before yesterday. It's a constant repetition of the same thing. Most of the time you do the same repetition. Why you don't say, oh, you know, today I will not do this, I will not. Because some things are important to, uh, for you and for everybody else, you see. That repetition, without that repetition, you will not uh, be where you are. So, like that, Japam is also like this for the Atma. To remind itself continuously where it has to be focused and where it has to be fixed. And that is on the lotus feet of Giridhari itself, you know. Nowhere else. No. That's what Japam does, you know. So if you have faith, yes, just one name is enough. You know? And that one name itself will create. Marvel. Japam is each breath itself. You know. Your constant life is a Japam which is offered at the lotus feet of Shrimanarayana.